It seemed as though it was such a great idea. It was so basic, so important. You know, looking back on it, it, it was probably more than any of us realized at the time, but thank God we, we didn't know that and we could get it done. He's done so much work in the community in so many different areas, but the Boys and Girls Club, I think, is what he's most proudest of because he created something. I got involved with the Boys and Girls Club mid-early 90s. It was a, an opportunity that came up because we didn't have anything like this for the children in Sacramento. Fred Tykert gave me a call on the phone and said I needed some help uh, raising money to build a Boys and Girls Club in Sacramento. And I said, well, I can't right now. And he said, well, I'll call you in January. He called me in January on the January 2nd and said, are you ready to go to work? And I said, okay. I was saying, well, I get so tired of going to all these rubber chicken fundraisers. Why can't we just go somewhere, have hot dogs, a hamburger, jeans, a great band, low costs? And Fred said, great, we'll call it the Broke Ball. And that's how the Broke Ball came into being. It was a little embarrassing. I tried about 20 people to give a lot of money. I hadn't created the Thomas P. Rayleigh Foundation yet because this all took place not too long after my father had passed away. And I was looking for something to honor him in this community that would be permanent. I think his request papers sat on my desk. It could have been for six months. Shame on me. I called him at home and I told Fred, would you please sit down? I have something to tell you. He probably thought, oh my God, what's coming next? We're gonna do it, Fred, it's yours. <laughs> You know, he has such exuberance, and uh, it made my heart sing. We ended up raising the money, building not one, but two sites, one of which uh, is named after Thomas Raley. And through Fred's vision, I understand that we now, the Boys and Girls Club serves thousands of children. It was uh, kind of overwhelming, and thinking, what an amazing world where everybody can just play together and, and be kids. There are so many things that we need to provide for our children within um, the realm of helping them grow into being wonderful, healthy, happy human beings that are not inside of the books or the curriculum. Every weekday, you know, I, I get up out of bed and I know that I'm going to touch the heart of a, of a child. I go and visit these kids' schools and I think that Every child like that needs an oasis like Boys and Girls Club. The Boys and Girls Club provides those kids, and to an extent their families, an option, a way to get on the right path and to realize their full potential. I was just so enamored with it and I thought it was the coolest place in the world. But as I've grown into the club, one of the things that I noticed was that it's not really the facility per se, but more so the people and the relationships that you build. As I look to the future, I think several things. Joyce Teal and I started in a, an endowment fund. It would be great to see an endowment fund like that get to say $20 million so that you could run most of the actual operations of the Boys and Girls Club from your earnings. I could imagine easily having another two or maybe three clubs to get us to a 100% graduation rate for high school I think would be pretty cool. Fred is probably one of the more important mentors uh, in my life. Fred is definitely a hero in my book. I think Fred is a hip kind of guy. To know Fred is to love Fred. He's thoughtful, generous. To me, he has all the qualities that a leader should have. He's such a good person and a caring person. He's made me try to be a better person, and I think he's been not only the founder of the clubs, but I think he's an inspiration to the children.